when the oncologist mentioned that I'm stage 4 cancer, I thought it's very unfair. I didn't go through stage 1 or 2 or 3 or, and then suddenly 4. Yeah, I was really sad that I have so many things I haven't done. The first uh, enriched treat I first joined was uh, March this year. We were given a lot of topics and um, some of these topics actually help us to understand ourselves more and also to give us the purpose of life and also our new journey as a cancer patient. I actually met with a lot of cancer uh, patients and survivors and caregivers and they were so willing to share their stories and some of them have survived more than 10 years. They give me hope as well as it helped me to grow as a person. Calling Cancer Helpline is important for the patient, the caregiver and also for the public because we not only provide the latest clinical information but we also provide emotional support. Cancer is a painful journey. Chemotherapy, the side effect itself is already uh, unbearable already. They will call us and tell us how they feel and sometimes the painkiller can't really help them. Sometimes they feel that they want to end their life because they are painful. They will cry during the conversation over the phone. Their pain was so unbearable, which their own family member which can't understand, having some uh, struggling inside their emotional feeling. I was a kindergarten teacher for 15 years until the time my mom was saying, you are not giving me enough time. You're always spending time in the school with the children, with your work. So I said, okay, once I finish my diploma course, I'm going to spend time with you. But halfway through the course, my mom passed away. It was full of regrets that I didn't give my mom the care that she wanted to. When I see caregivers, I understand the stress they have to go through to look after the sick. I usually donate blood. When they told me I couldn't give a blood anymore, I decided to give monetary donations so that other people can benefit. There are so many things which they can help um, getting the best people. You, uh, with the money, they can train more people, they can do more research and they can find more ways to help the sick. I uh, receive uh, this uh, funding which support me for my um, Master of Nursing uh, course. The death and dying are uh, still a taboo to a lot of people in society. It's um, not an easy topic. Palliative care is not just focused on death. Actually, we focus on more of uh, how to make patients actually uh, live better with uh, limited time, making it more meaningful each day they, they have. We focus on quality of life instead of quantity of time. During the time when I started my chemo, my hair started to fall and I used to wear a beanie when I come for my appointment. And patients used to ask me, where do I buy my hat from? And I said, I knitted this myself. So when I attended this workshop and saw so many of the other ladies similar situation at myself and I thought, these ladies actually need, need to have one of these hats. So after that workshop, I went home I knitted 100 hats. So as soon as I was well enough to leave the house and go out, I approached them and I said, do you think we can start a class where I can teach cancer survivors, volunteers, caregivers, anyone who wants to learn a new skill how to knit hats? And this is how the Knit for Hope in NCCS started last year. Losing your breast is so traumatic, you know, and not being able to have something something to use that you can afford is just unthinkable. So since as of last year, I got a group of volunteers, started knitting this, it's called Knitted Knockers. When they see this and they have it fitted on their bra, they literally cry. They are so, they are so touched. I promise that I will give them 100 knockers every three months, which is what uh, we did.